Hello, my name is Grace Davy, and I live in Exeter, where I worked for some 20 years before I retired. I'm a specialist in the field of religion. I work in the sociology of religion. I also taught in this field for many years. I'm going to talk today about a concept called, that I called, named, Believing Without Belonging. It was very widely debated at the time, and I'm going to tell you first how it began, and then how it's developed in my thinking since. And I still reflect on it, in, for example, with respect to the COVID pandemic. So let's begin by saying in 1990, I wrote an article which um, was entitled Believing Without Belonging and began to develop my thinking about that. Some four years later, I wrote a book called Religion in Britain since 1945 and the subtitle was Believing Without Belonging. So the idea was more fully developed in a book. Just a couple of points about what I did and didn't say in this book. I didn't really describe believing and without belonging, uh, the, the ideas in detail so that they could be measured or, or subject to, to quantitative analysis. I was doing something rather more subtle. I was trying to capture a mood, capture a way of understanding that religion is not only about hard variables, it's not only about things that we can measured, but there are a lot of people who are attached to religious organizations in a much more amorphous or less, um, less developed way, but it's nonetheless important to them. And it was that area of society or, or, or living, human living that I wanted to express and I used this phrase to do it. Now, what happened afterwards, uh, which was in a way not in my control, was all sorts of people all over the, um, Europe and beyond began to measure these variables and say, was I right or was I wrong? On the whole, people agreed with me, but others found that, that uh, um, what I had suggested was not as accurate as they thought it should be. It worried me, however, that as this was going on, belief was seen as the soft variable and belonging was seen as the hard variable, the, the, the strong attachment. So around 2000, around the turn of the millennium, I moved on to a different idea, which I called vicarious religion. The idea that some people, a minority, carry out religious activities on behalf of um, a much larger number of people. And sometimes their attachments are through belief and sometimes attachments are through belonging. And either belief or belonging could be hard and firm or much more amorphous and soft. For example, in terms of belief, you can say, I believe in God in a very precise way. You can recite a creed. You can assent to a set of statements and you really are one of us, one of the club. Or you can have a very um, undefined idea of God and simply think, I think there is a God, I don't know much about him or her, but I still would put my hand up and say, yes, I think there's a God. Or that this world is in some way penultimate, there's something else there. But in terms of belonging, you could either be very regular in your attendance at a church or a synagogue or a mosque, or you could go very occasionally or say, I go sometimes at Easter, Christmas, for a wedding or whatever. So both can be hard or soft. And then I worked with this idea that the, 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 the firm believers and the firm belongers did things on behalf of everyone else who were really quite pleased that happened. They kind of held the space. Um, and, and kept the institution going so that if I or anyone else wants to to use it on a more um, irregular basis, it's still there. And you can discover this by looking, um, looking at what happens if you, if you close a church or you close a religious organization. People get, are offended by this, but not always the people who are as committed as others might be. They like it to be there. I use the notion of an iceberg. I found that quite helpful. Um, in my work, in my research, I was trying to discover what was happening under the water. 
it's all very well to research the bit that sticks out, the visible bit of the church. I was really interested in the bits underneath. One of the things I discovered along the way, which was quite interesting, was that um, if I used this term vicarious religion and I worked in different parts of Europe, I gave lectures in different parts of Europe, everybody understood what I meant. Sometimes we had to work quite hard to find a French or a different language term that expressed it um, because there's many different languages in Europe. But once they got the idea, they, they thought, yeah, we understand that. And they gave me all sorts of examples from their own situation. But if I went to the United States, English speaking for the most part in the bits that I was working in, they didn't understand it at all. It's not part of their self-understanding. Americans are very much self-help can do up to us. They don't rely on institutions. They subscribe, they're much more active in their commitments, both secular and religious. religious. And I found that very interesting. Quite a lot of people adopted the notion of vicarious religion, not quite as many as believing without belonging, but it, 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 wasn't, it had a good go. But what was happening in the next 10 years, say between the millennium and 2010, was the real growth in what we call nuns, people who have no religion, people who stepped outside institutions, outside organizational religion altogether. They're growing in number in this country and in several others. Interestingly, they don't necessarily lose all sense of belief. And so here we have another situation, a new situation, not concerned about the institution that might do things for them, that doesn't count. But nonetheless, I sustain some sort of belief. The maybes, the doubters, I don't know. Um, in, among the nuns, they're not all committed atheists or unbelievers. Just, just don't, don't take that idea. They're very mixed. And in some ways, believing without belonging, I think, might have a new lease of life capturing these people outside the churches, outside all religious organizations, but bearing in mind, of course, that it has a slightly different meaning from the one I originally had some 20 years earlier, when um, I was trying to capture those within the organization who were not very active. Now it's changed, but I still think you can use the notion of having some sort of belief without the attachment. In some ways, it's even more literally believing without belonging. And just a postscript on 2020, a year we will never forget. How does it all play into COVID? It's too soon to say really, but how does COVID affect or influence religion? And how does religion respond? Here are two questions. Just early thinking, early results, very preliminary. The closing of churches and other religious organizations a year ago, or just over a year ago, en masse, not one or two, but all of them, was unthinkable. But it happened. As indeed, did we shut banks and shops and schools and universities? Churches were no different. Some of them protested more rigorously than others, but almost all capitulated. And they moved online, like everything else work, shopping, and worship. We were discovering new ways of doing things. And churches also, the belonging bit, were offering very obviously networks of practical support, notably food banks. Many, many food banks are hosted by churches, which meant of course, that they could stay open. So lots more work to do, sometimes with the concept of believing with, without, without belonging, but possibly new ideas as well. Good luck with your work.